Hey, I'm Chris Zepp from Make Everything, and today we're getting a new bandsaw. This is a 1950s Grob NS18 metal cutting bandsaw. It weighs about a thousand pounds, and I'm going to show you how we moved it with just an engine crane and a pallet jack. Check it out. All right, so before we get into this, just a little disclaimer. Um, I'm not a professional rigger. I'm not a professional mover. The experience I have moving equipment is from the stuff that I've moved for myself. Um, I'm just a stubborn idiot and I hate paying riggers to move equipment when I think that I can do it on my own. Um, that being said, this is not necessarily the safest way. It's not the most efficient way. If you're ever in doubt on whether or not you can move something, please hire a professional. Don't take the chance. Machines this size or even smaller can kill you and hurt you. So always be careful, know your limits, and um, enjoy watching me struggle to move this monster. All right. Let's get into it. So the machine was purchased at an auction and this is from the machine shop that had uh, had gone out of business. It was a lighting manufacturer. So the first thing we did was took the table off off camera. And my thought was that if we tipped the machine on its side, we could move it. But I wasn't 100% sure how tipping it was going to go. So we had put out some six by six blocks and a moving blanket and uh, laid the machine down. Um, this machine weighs about a thousand pounds. So um, whenever I buy a machine like this, I always bring a pallet jack with me to move it if I'm not sure that there's gonna be one there for me to use. Um, I'd rather have one there that I know I can use and no one's gonna give me a hard time about than ask them to borrow one. Um, I had called the auction house in advance and asked them if there was a pallet jack. They kind of gave me a half answer. So I just figured I own one, I'll bring my own. So the main way that we're gonna move this machine is with the engine crane. And um, something I'll say is I pick up this machine with ratchet straps, uh, heavy duty ratchet straps. I know they're not rated for lifting, so I'm not gonna say that I recommend doing that. Um, the way I'm lifting it here is with a load strap. Now that is, okay for lifting but ratchet straps have you know some mechanical aspects to them that can fail under weight so please don't lift with ratchet straps this was just what i had at the time um so getting it on its side was important because you know to get it into my truck it has to be on its side my truck's not tall enough for it to stand up and i felt that the weight would be a little more even on its side so we put a strap around the base and then another one up to the head and it sort of lifted it uh horizontally now my engine crane is set on a uh, half ton and I figure without the table on there, I'm under a thousand pounds. So we sort of muscle it in and then continue to lift it with the engine crane to slide it into the back of the truck. And once we're in the truck, it's a huge sigh of relief because you know we have the height and we're inside and then I proceed to just sort of block it up with the six by sixes so that once we get back to the shop, we can get it out. Now, there was a forklift at the shop, but they wouldn't let me use it. And honestly, I don't like to load with a forklift because I don't have a forklift back at the shop. So I have to be able to load and unload with the tools that I have. So if I load with the tools that I have, I know I can get the stuff out with the tools that I have. So we get the pallet jack back in there, we get the engine crane back in there, and we take the drive back to the shop. Two hours later. So one of the big issues I have at my shop is the gravel driveway. Um, we have a drainage problem with rainwater, so paving the driveway is not an option. And, uh, but the gravel makes moving stuff a real pain. So I keep a lot of extra three quarter inch plywood at the shop so that you know when we need to roll a dolly or something there's stuff there so we set the engine crane up and um, get ready to pull the machine out the same way that we put it in okay so we got the bandsaw in on its side we got to get it out on its side but we kind of nudged it a little bit so now we're going to use the pallet jack to pull it as far back out as we can and then we're going to use the engine crane to lift it up 
and then I'm gonna pull the truck out from underneath it. Then we'll be on the engine crane, goal is to be on the pallet jack, and then going through the front doors. Now this method of lifting the machine and pulling the truck out, I've done it a couple of times. Um, I much prefer it over trying to push the machine to the vehicle. Um, I was moving a big lathe a couple of years ago and actually while the forklift was driving the lathe to the back of my truck, the pallet that it was on broke and the lathe fell. Luckily we were able to save it, but since then I've always had the load be in a static position where it's lifted and then I move the, the truck to and from it. I just feel a little bit safer that way. So we'll back the truck up so that I can get the crane hook above the machine, go back as far as I can, and then lift it up. I was able to rig it a little bit better this time, uh, a little more even than I did at the machine shop. I felt a little rushed when I was at the machine shop. There were a bunch of people waiting to get out and I had waited about two hours just to get my turn to unload. So it's better to be at home where I have you know all the time. So now the machine is up. I just gently pull my truck out and Kai's back there making sure that we're clear and you know we're not gonna pull on anything. And this is probably the most dangerous part of this move. Um, you know, in hindsight, I shouldn't have left the machine this high up. We should have lowered it so that there was less of a distance that it could fall and less of a option to get underneath it. You know, you should never get underneath the machine that's being held up by a hydraulic lift like this. You know, that pump could basically go at any time. And then we just put it down. Now, this time we're on two sets of six by sixes to uh, get it high enough, high enough off the ground that we can get the pallet jack back underneath it. The six by sixes aren't high enough for me to be off of the crane. So that's why I had to use two. And then I have to use these two by fours on edge on the, on the pallet jack, lift it up and pull out a six by six, lower it back down. It's kind of a balancing act. When you don't have a forklift and you're, you know, the pallet jack only lifts so high, it's a little bit of back and forth to kind of get where you need to go but you can do a lot of stuff with a pallet jack that you really can't do by hand. So the little extra time is worth it. Now something that's key to any move is a steel bar. At this point, I was exhausted, and all I wanted to do was be done moving this thing. To get it into the shop, I got a little curb there and more gravel, so we lay out some more plywood and just try and roll it in through the door. It honestly went into the shop way smoother than I thought it was going to. Over that curb wasn't bad at all. We made it in. Cool. So, whenever we're doing this with the pallet jack is with the 6x6, six six, we're putting the 6x6 the six six in between the forks of the pallet jack so that we can put it down, move the pallet jack, and then lift it up and turn the blocks and kind of maneuver it around. But with the 6 by 6s and the pallet jack works out really well, so let's try and get this thing standing up. Now this whole method of using the 6 by 6s with the pallet jack works great. Um, having 6 by 6s when trying to move anything are great for blocking. They're really strong uh, and they're high enough that pretty much any pallet jack will get under it no problem.
two blocks. So yeah, so it should just teeter back like almost immediately. Okay. Now, one, two, one, two, one, two, twist. Okay. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Wow. Like it was nothing. <laughs> All right. So now that the machine's standing up and it's in the shop, it's time to start putting it back together. But before I put it back together, I want to get it on wheels. So Mac comes by the shop and uh, we built up a dolly for this with some plywood and um, some casters. Each caster that we put underneath this is rated for 500 pounds. So the four of them together will be 2,000. And at this point that the machine's standing up, we can lift it from the base. We were almost centered, but it still wanted to tip towards me, so sort of had to put some weight on it while we pushed the dolly under there. Now the machine's mobile, it uh, it really rolls around great. And it gets its first test fire. I actually got to see this machine run at the machine shop, which is rare that a uh, machinery auction still has live power. So it was nice to know that it worked before I even got it home and then just to make sure that we didn't damage anything, I plugged it in and gave it a run. The table from this machine is definitely sizable and you can tell it's from an old piece of equipment because the castings are just so thick and so heavy duty. So it took two of us to get this thing back in place. We fought with it a little bit. It's got a little bit of a uh, tough mechanism underneath the bottom the way that it's locked in. So it's kind of hard to get it in position to you know, get the hold downs going. What was giving us so much trouble was down here. You got these are um, kind of angled on the back side and then these are notched. And this whole thing sits in there so you can rotate the table. And this table actually will tilt this way and it'll also tilt front and back. You can see from the adjustment over here. So you can get a look at these. Now that the table's in place, we can get the blade on there and give it a test cut. This machine was surprisingly easy to get the blade on and get the tracking going. You know, running at a low RPM kind of makes it a little easier to track, but um, you can have problems over time because with high speed, if the blade's going to pop off, it pops off immediately. With a low speed, sometimes under pressure, the blade will go out of, out of tracking. So. We just set it up so that the blade was running in the middle of the wheels, gave it a little bit of tension, and went for a test cut. This is some eighth inch angle stock. Overall, I was pretty happy with the way the machine was moved. Um, we had a couple little hiccups, but you know, not having a forklift, it's not necessarily the easiest thing to move a machine this size. So the engine crane and the pallet jack are essential and um, having a second set of hands to you know help you tip a machine like this is going to be key if you ever want to do this yourself. It just goes where it wants. All right, that about does it for this one. Again, I'm Chris Zepp from Make Everything. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something or at least were entertained. If you think I'm an idiot, leave me a comment below. Uh, if you want to check out some more stuff that we do at the shop, follow us on Instagram, at Make Everything Shop. And if you're interested in any Make Everything gear, 
shirts, hats, or other stuff, check out our web store. Link in the description. I'm excited to put this thing to use, and uh, hopefully we'll see you on the next video. Thanks.